For today's project, we're going to be using a program called Noise Plug. It was written by Joaquim Fenkes, otherwise known as DOP3J0E. I'm not sure which one it is. It's a simple uh, AVI, AVR source file, um, written all, all written in assembly language. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to switch over to using ATtiny10 IDE for the rest of this. This is a new version of my ATtiny10 IDE. I, I wrote this actually several years ago, but only recently got around to fixing up some final things I want to do to it. It now is designed to run on both Windows and Mac. It has built-in tool chains, so you don't need to do a separate install. And uh, it has a bunch of example programs that are collected from some of the ones I've written before. And uh, it also has a neat little trick I'll talk about in a second. But the IDE now has um, line numbers and, and nicely uh, a formatted uh, you know, color coding, which is due to an open source project I'll credit uh, towards the end. Um, it's essentially the same operation, except that uh, now I've expanded it so you can you can both um, assemble using .s format, which is from the AVRAS program, or using an assembly that I wrote, which is a homebrew assembly that's kind of approximate to the AT time, the sorry the the app mill format, um, or you can use C or C++ files using AVRG++. It says it always compiles for C++, but it'll take C syntax as well. Uh, the thing that makes it unique is that you can simply take in our any Arduino um, of well not any Arduino but Arduino Uno for example or uh, um, well one of the typical Arduino types that take a shield and without any additional hardware you can just connect from pins D through D2 to D6 directly to an AT Tiny 10 mounted on a header and you can program it. Um, in addition, you can actually use the ATtiny10 IDE to generate a programmer file. That is, you can you can load in some program you've written for the ATtiny10 and see your assembly. You can compile it, and then as output, it'll create an, an Arduino sketch that contains your source code in it, and you can distribute that to other people. And all they need to do is 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 load that sketch into the Arduino, attach these wires. And when they run the sketch, it'll actually program the ATtiny10 with whatever code that you've written. There's so a couple limitations on that, like you, you can't make use of the reset pin. That's used as part of the programming process. But that still gives you basically three I.O. pins and, and, and almost the entire functionality of the ATtiny10. Uh, I use a, in the, in the video in a second, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to use a, a SparkFun Redboard, which is an AT, which is an Arduino clone. This little adapter circuit board here, which you can order from OSH Park, that plugs right into pins two through six, and then lets you plug in a little header board on top, which is what carries the AT2010. And you can just plug these in, program them, then stick them in a breadboard or into a project that you that you want to program. The rest of the text here describes some of the other features, like setting fuses and clocks and. It's a built-in function to calibrate the clock on the ATtiny10 so you can get a much more accurate clock source. Um, and uh, with that, let's jump into actually trying out the, the noise plug code using by ATtiny10 IDE. We have my ATtiny10 plugged into my programming adapter, a little piece of paper here to shield the, the blinding green light that's coming off of this spark front redboard I'm using in place of just a standard Arduino. This actually is effectively a standard Arduino, same circuitry and so forth, but just made by spark fun. So I'll start up the ATtiny10 IDE. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the verify the settings. I've got the port selected correctly. I'm going to use actions to identify the device, although I'm going to have to kind of give this a little bit of a twist to make sure the contacts engage because they're not soldered correctly in place. Try that again. Okay, it's correctly read that it's an AT Tiny 10. You have to be careful doing programming to get a good solid contact. Normally you'd solder these pens in place, but 
for the application I have in mind, I, I really don't want them soldered, so I'm going to this link to avoid doing that. Next, I'm going to switch back to the source code pane, and I'm going to load in the noise bridge code. It's a .s file, which means it's written to use um, the a, a GNU style AVR assembly language as opposed to the the Atmel style. Um, I won't uh, claim to understand this program. It's quite extensive. Makes use of various timers and and bits and pieces to perform little musical tunes. It's a lot easier to demonstrate than it is to explain how the code actually works. But if you understand it, feel free to send me a link and let me know uh, actually how I might even be able to modify this code to play other kinds of tunes. So, um, and that's I'm going to build the code, and that's going to give me the the assembly language output. Okay, everything looks good. I'm going to select for my hex output is there. It's a pretty good sized chunk of code. And next, I'm going to go to the programming section again. I'm going to go over and again hold down the AT Tiny 10 and select program. Program device. Okay, looks like we got away with it. Next step, let's go solder into a circuit. So here's my finished uh, programmed AT Tiny 10 with the noise plug code in it. The original noise plug was designed to actually fit inside a um, an actual audio jack. You could then put little batteries inside it and plug it into a piece of audio equipment and it played back the chip tunes. But I was over at my dollar store today and I noticed they had these old cheap little, little mini powered speakers. It takes two AA, two uh, AAA batteries, not included. So here's what it actually looks like. So I, I bought a couple. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly open them up here so you can see what's inside. Move the battery door. Yeah, a couple of triple A's and pop it open. It looks like there's a rather beefy speaker up there. Four ohm. It says three watt. Um, there's a circuit down there. Uh, I've opened up another one prior to this, so at this point I'll, I'll inlet a circuit over here. You can see what's actually on the flip side of this. But since there's a power on off switch, uh, an input jack, and I guess an LED to indicate that it's powered up. You have to trim off the uh, flash off this little piece of plastic there to be able to pull the circuit board out. I'm not going to do that to this one because I've already got one that's been set aside for this. And here's uh, the completed project. Um, you can see the uh, amplifier chip down in there. I've cut out the LED because I didn't really see much purpose in that. Just kind of consume extra power and you don't really even see it. And then I've soldered connections to the uh, switch side of the power switch, which is here, that goes into pin um, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the AT Tiny 10, and the ground from over here where the LED used to be, it goes into pin 2, and the output from pin 1 right in the upper left corner there goes into one of the two stereo inputs that are available on the board. It doesn't really matter, they both just feed through a capacitor down there. So now let's button this thing up and uh, Give it a whirl. Okay, you got the screws out. Let me make sure I've got everything seated correctly in there. That's got to go a little further down. Now if I can get the cover back on and lined up with the, where the holes originally were. That should help hold it all together. Ah, there we go. It mostly seems to fit. Okay. Ready for the trial. Well, you heard a little piece of it a second ago, but... It's plenty loud.
very heroic sounding. Must be. I don't recognize this music. If it's from something, maybe somebody can let me know. Might need to put a little resistor divider network in there to uh, lower the volume down. Something reasonable. That's a bit loud, but you can entertain a whole room full of people with that. Okay. Anyway, that's today's project, uh, just for fun. Um, AT Tiny Tens are like less than 50 cents a piece, a little circuit board. Um, we've got Arduino lying around, and my free IDE, AT Tiny Ten IDE software, uh, uh, $1 at the Dollar Tree store for the amplifier module or something similar, and have your own little portable, little rocking out device. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up in the video. Um, appreciate it and subscribe. I uh, have more stuff coming up in the future, especially more AT Tiny 10 projects, and I'll talk more about my AT Tiny 10 IDE and how you can use it to, to create your own code. Thanks.